Hey there, man. How you doing? All right. This is uh, Ryan. This is Ryan. This is David. Yes, sir. What are you up to? Are, are you cats going to come to the party at my house tonight? I don't think I can make it, but I think other people might be going. Oh, well, it's going at about 7, man, if you change your mind. All right, sweet. Yeah, I'm just kind of swamped because I started school this week, so. Oh, where do you see you? Mm -mm. No, it's at Wake Tech. Oh. Online, but, um, yeah, but, uh, that's, I'm sure I'll make it to another one of those parties. I know I made it to the last one, I think it was. Um, well, there's a lot of parties over here now. Okay, cool. Yeah. Always welcome, man. Very nice. So, um, just so you know, I am recording this conversation. Um, uh, oh, I thought you were going to come by and talk to me in person. You want to do it on the phone? Well, uh, we could do it in person if we set up some mics and stuff. You know, I got to record it, but... Uh, Oh, yeah, I thought, I thought you were going to come by the house. That's, that's why I said, uh, like, 2 or 3 o'clock this afternoon, because it's the only time I have before I got to uh, get ready for this party. Yeah, I thought we were doing it now over the phone. Oh, we can, yeah. I just I thought you were, you were like, pulling up to my house in a second. No, no, that's, no, normally I do it over the phone and I record it. Oh, cool, then, okay. Yeah, and then I, uh, you know, we released the uh, print version of it. Um, your, in your case, it would be on uh, the. It's going to be the October first edition. Um, nice. And uh, if you're okay with it, we'll also release um, the, the audio on the YouTube channel. <laughs> okay. Man. Well, I hope I don't say anything stupid then. <laughs> Hey, the important thing is whatever you say will forever be recorded and then <laughs> passed down through generations and generations. Well, the internet is forever, I suppose. Yeah, it'll it'll every piece of information on the internet will be very important in 100 years. Well, uh, hopefully this conversation <laughs> will be, yeah. yeah hopefully right. they'll know my work in 100 years. I, well, why not? Maybe we could be a small part of that. So, I hope so, man. <laughs> so, uh, so let's uh, let's start with the basic rundown of the information here. Um, number one, what's your name and where are you located in time and space? Uh, I'm David Cicerone, and I live in the zoo down by the river in Greenville, North Carolina. <laughs> Which river is that? Uh, that's the Tar River. Hmm. Interesting. And how long have you been located there? Oh, three glorious years. <laughs> and have you been doing shows there the whole time? Have I been doing what? Shows there the whole time. Parties. Oh, well, we didn't start doing that until uh, after COVID was kind of over. And then oh, all sure. of a sudden, uh, everybody's at my house every weekend, and we just started doing shows. Nice. And uh, what's your experience with them in the past? Did you used to run shows before COVID as well? Uh, I never. I don't really run the shows. It's more of uh, Jeff Blender and people like that. I just provide the house for them to destroy. <laughs> I see. Do you uh, do you make music of your own? Oh, always. Uh, I played at one of the shows a few weeks ago, but I don't have like a serious uh, project right now. I see. Did you in the past? Uh, well, not really. I was living overseas for many years, and it was kind of hard to put a music thing together over there because people are always kind of coming and going. So uh, nothing serious over there. But when I got back home, I started to play a bit more. I think I'll start playing more uh, in the future, around town maybe, or at least at my house. Uh, what were you doing overseas? 
I was in China and Korea and Turkey teaching English. My goodness. Do you know other languages? Oh, no, I can't learn languages. I have a mental block. Okay. Well, why did you decide to teach them in Turkey and China? Well, it was 08 when I got out of school and there was uh, the recession and there was no jobs anywhere. And so I found out all you needed to do to teach overseas was have a degree, a university <laughs> degree in anything. And so I just ended up in Seoul in Korea. And it was meant to be a one or two year thing. And then I stayed over in Asia for 10 years. Oh, righteous. That's very cool. I had no idea that, that about that. Yeah, um, my, my advice is get out of America. Big world out there, you know. Oh, hell yeah. So before that, like when you were very much younger, did you uh, did you play music in, at that point? Uh, well, I started playing guitar when I was like 10, but I didn't really get very serious about it till like uh, my early 20s, I guess. Okay, and what about your art? When did you start making that? I didn't do that until I was 22. I just woke up one day and decided to try doing art. And the okay. next thing I knew, I was doing it all day. and I've just been doing it for the past, what would it be, like 14 years now. Oh, cool. How old are you? I'm 37. Nice. And uh, when you make your pieces, what's your normal medium? Like, what what do you like to use? Uh, that's uh, It's mainly like pen and colored pencil and crayon on vellum paper. Uh, you want to use vellum because it's a lot thicker than, like, drawing paper. And I'm putting pastels and stuff like that on there, so it holds that kind of stuff better than regular drawing paper. The ones I'm doing now are 19 by 24. They take about a month to do. Yes, your pieces are extremely detailed. I noticed it's um, almost like a psychedelic Where's Waldo painting. Yeah, a lot of people have said that. I put these pictures up and they say, Where's Waldo? There's always someone who does that on Facebook. Oh, I apologize for being cliche then. <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as you said psychedelic, because that's the effect I'm going for, you know? Yeah. Um, so... You, you clearly work on, like I said, a very small scale. Like, you you have lots of details in your work is what I'm saying. Um, was there something that made you decide to focus that intently on each little piece of the page? Uh, I just have a habit of, like, trying to squash as much color and detail into these things as possible. And so you just get that obsessive level of detail it comes from uh, there's a sort of school of art called outsider art. If you know what that is, it's um, it's uh, art by people that are just totally outside the normal art establishment. They tend to be mental patients and people like that. And I never saw any of that until I was about 22. And when I saw that, I thought I could probably do something like that. So I started making art kind of in the style of that. Nice. Uh, and I noticed that in your house you kind of have like a whole like almost studio space where you uh, seem to do it. Yeah, uh, I got this one room that's like the music room and the art room. And then people come over and they complain there's nowhere to sit, no place to crash. So. <laughs> um, very nice. And where do you where have you displayed your art? Uh, in well, in Greenville. Let me see. I was. I had a couple of pieces at the Greenville Museum of Art when they had a show like maybe like a year and a half ago. And I believe when uh, uh, when da uh, David's Used Books is opening a new branch downtown, uh, I think I'm going to have some displayed there with a lot of other artists. Oh, cool. That's great. Um, what, um, what have you experimented with in terms of materials? Uh, I've just kind of used the same things over the years, just, uh, like I said, colored pencils and crayons mostly, and, uh, every now and then I got charcoal in there, and I even have some stuff which uses glitter, like, you know, the kind of things, uh, like an eight-year-old kid would use, just a pack of glitter at the store. Uh, I kind of like using stuff that 
maybe other people aren't using, but maybe it's because I can't paint. Yeah, no, <laughs> that can be so. Um, so, uh, tell me a little bit more about yourself. Where did you grow up? Uh, well, I'm from Hurricane, West Virginia. It's a town of 5,000 on the side of a mountain outside of Charleston. And my father worked for the government, so uh, I grew up all over the states. And um, uh, Chicago and New Orleans and D.C. and Charlotte before I came to school here in Greenville back in the day. Um, like ECU? Yeah, from a, it was like 20 years ago. Okay. Well, let's see. By the way, I would like to um, have some examples of your work to display in the magazine, if that's okay. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I don't know if you've got photographs or not, but that would be. Uh, I've got I've got ten of them. I think ten or twelve that have been like professionally scanned. Uh, I could I could send those over to you if you want me to. Yeah, let's do that. And because um, I'd like to fill a good deal of the space with the actual work itself. Cause that's really what it's all about. Yeah, of course. Like, how many pieces are you thinking? Um, like a, like let's say like at least six. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, I'll I'll just send you uh, I'll send you all ten. What was it, ten or twelve of them? You can just choose the ones you want to put in there. Okay, sweet. Um, what did you study in college? Oh, I was uh, I was I studied literature. I wanted to be a writer back in the day, and uh, I somehow I ended up being a poet for years on end and a failed novelist. And then I got more into the art, so I don't write anymore. Mm. Do you uh, do you, do you do anything with the with writing now, or do you just do you enjoy to read still? I can't read anything. Uh, from when I was seventeen to thirty, I read everything by everybody. So there's nothing left to read. I open a book <laughs> now, I read a paragraph, and I'm just like, no, nah, I can't do it. Damn. And nobody reads today. That's the that's no, the that's problem true. with the no with one. the kids. <laughs> no, it's hard to it's hard to find time to read. Um, what's um? So what do you spend your time doing, most days? Well, now I got this work from home job, so I never have to leave my house, which is nice. Uh, and I just do that, and I sit around and pluck at uh, my guitar. And sooner or later, I'll actually start doing some new art. Right. Just, do you have any plans going forward with the art? Well, I have this whole stack of sketches right here, and I got a new piece I've been meaning to start for about the past two months, but uh, I never seem to get around to it. What is the what's the content of your work? What's the what? The content, the subject matter. Oh. Uh... I don't know. I just start uh, drawing, and uh, there's a lot of kind of bad stuff, and then every now and then you get on something good, and you just kind of put a bunch of that into one piece and uh, see see what happens with it. I never plan these things out, man. They just sort of come out uh, the way they come out. I'm never happy with them at the end. The more I don't like it when it's done, uh, the better the piece tends to be. It just takes a month and a half for me to start liking it. It's the ones mm -hmm. I like when I finish them that I later on I say, no, nah, that's terrible. Well, you said you'd had some sketches that you'd done. So I don't know, if, do you normally like sketch first and then work, or do you just, how, what's the relationship of those things? I just carry around this little notebook, and every now and then I put down a sketch, and whenever something seems like it uh, is a worthwhile idea, I just transfer it over to the, to the 19 by 24 paper. And then I spend a month making it look good nice very good and it's a long it's a long process a very obsessive process it takes forever to do it almost sounds like it almost reminds me of um like there are certain schools of buddhist monks um in india and in nepal who will uh it's almost like the the experience of making it is what really matters rather if that makes sense 
Oh, well, man, it's not the destination. It's the ride, you know? Yeah, exactly. That's, 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 that's what I was saying. Because they... Because you say you take a month to do it, and there are these very intricate and detailed things, and you also don't have a lot of intentionality going into it in the beginning. So it seems to me like it's possibly like a me- like almost like a meditative process for you. Well, you got to put yourself into a bit of a trance, you know, for the colors to flow uh, at the most optimal levels, you know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't plan any of this. I just I just take one random color and I work with that until I get tired of it and I switch to another color and that's how you get those crazy backgrounds on those things hell yeah um has your art have you had any like bands or or uh, have you worked with any other musicians or artists or bands or collaborators with your visual art before uh you know I haven't done that I'd actually I'd actually like to do that I'd, I'd like to have another artist um hand me something that's drawn in like pen and then I color it yeah. or maybe just the other way around I draw something have someone else color it like just to see just to see what happens when you know when you have two artists instead of one you know but no I haven't I haven't done that yet I'd really like to in the future very cool because your work also kind of reminds me like of a li- like of of like a projection that would be behind like a band for a light show or something like that like it's kind of got this uh, neon sort of quality, and like I can imagine it like pulsing with colors pretty easily. Yeah, um, I don't know. It's uh, a lot of the time when I make these things, I'm listening to psychedelic music, so maybe that's why they look the way they do. But yeah, I could see that uh, being projected behind the band. It just depends what kind of music they play. Right. Well, what kind of music do you listen to when you make them? Oh, well, I like the very first Pink Floyd album. It's called Piper at the Gates of Dawn. That's always a good one to listen to. Uh, maybe maybe Hendrix, too. Do you... it's, it's, good, it's good to work to, like, actually, like, if you listen to classical or you listen to, like, um, that post-rock type of stuff, you don't really want to listen to rock and roll because it, it distracts you because the songs are only three minutes long. So you want to have like a 45-minute piece of music you can get lost in. And the more lost in the music you get, uh, the more lost in the artwork you get. Uh-huh. And is there, you, I guess, is there a connection between what you're seeking when you listen to the music and what you're seeking when you're making the piece? Uh, well, I'd like to get the kind of spontaneity that music has, you know, into the into the artwork, if that makes any sense. Kind of unbridled uh, free expression and all that shit, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's what I like about, you know, is it, when you listen to, like, improvisational type of music, they're just uh, they're winging it, you know, as they play. And you got to do a lot of that when you do art. You can't plan too much. The planning is what ruins it. I got you. All right. Do you have your work available to see online? You know, I don't have a website. All I have is one of those Fine Art America type things. But you can't. But, but, uh, but there is something I can like print, and people can check it out if they want to. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It's just uh, Fine Art America slash David Cicerone, I think. David Cicerone. Well, yeah, I could I could just send you the link to that in a in a um, like Facebook message or something. That sounds good. Is there anything you'd like to promote? Like to promote? Uh, my friend's band uh, Shizu. Go see them. And the Paper Skulls, they're good, too. All right. And the final question is, is there anything else, it could be anything at all, you would like me to include in this that I have not asked you about and you have not mentioned yet? Um, don't listen to shit music. <laughs> That's my message for the young generation. I think they need to hear it. <laughs> okay, David. 
I think I got enough here to make something happen. Do you feel good? Right on, man. No, I uh, thank you, man. You know for uh, for doing this with me. Absolutely. Thank you too, and I'm sure I will see you at one of your many parties. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, if if you find time later tonight, uh, come by and check out the party then, and I'll uh, I'll send you that link to the website in a message in just a second. Oh, and and your and, and some some of your photos of your work too. Oh, of course, man. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'll just send over like all ten of them. You can just choose what you want to use in the in the magazine. Okay. Excellent. It will be available on October 1st, and I'll give you the link and everything when it comes. Okay. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate this. All right. Thank you. Have a good day. Yeah, one. man. You have a good day. You I'll too. see you. Bye-bye. Yeah.